Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two of my portrait lesson series and in this lesson we're going to cover the background and painting more on the facial features. The app we're going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android and this was painted on my Samsung Note Pro 12.2 tablet and also if you're going to follow along traditionally I have a list of the traditional materials in part one of this series and this shows all the paints and the canvases that I use. So to start for the background I want kind of a greenish color and I want this green color because it will complement the reddish brown skin tones in the portrait. And if you've studied color theory, then you'll know that red and green are color complements. And so this will make her features uh, come out very well. So probably take, if you're following along traditionally, a mixture of hooker's green and thalo blue, possibly a touch of deoxazine purple. And just mix it with white. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw in light and dark patches behind uh, the portrait. And the reason I'm doing it this way, you can paint the background first if you want to. But you can do it this way and it helps you adjust the edges of your portrait and get the shapes of the hat right and maybe the shape of her face. And you also want to keep the strokes rough. And if you're following along traditionally, your number 8 filbert will work or your number 10 bristle brush. And you want to just go ahead and lay the strokes around the edges of her hat and her hair. And just keep them rough. I, don't, I want this to have a little bit of a painter texture. And you can go ahead and throw in white to your paint mixture and make light and dark mixture here. There's a glitch in here. It seems like it, it's pixelating a little bit. And so I had to save it because I'm a beta tester and you've got to save frequently. And when it starts doing things like that, save it immediately. Save it before it starts doing things like that. So I went ahead and switched to the events brush and I'm blending it a little bit, but I don't want it all blended out. I, I still want the rough looking strokes for the background here. And it also kind of blended that glitch out a little bit. And so I went ahead and blended it towards her clothes a little bit and just around the face, shaping the, the features a little bit. And then I wanted to go ahead and add some shadow color and it started kind of glitching and doing a strange pixelation thing again. This is part of being a beta tester. So I went ahead and tried to make a new layer and see if that would work and that was worse. So I went ahead and tried to blend the layers try to collapse them and see if that would work but it just wasn't working so finally what I had to do was export this picture out as a PNG file and then re-import it as in a layer and that sort of took care of all the glitches because they just wouldn't go away here they just kept showing up it, it was pixelating for some reason and I think this is fixed in the latest updates because I've not run into it yet again. So here's the, the new import. And I was able to blend those pixelation areas out and go ahead and just continue where I left off. So <clears throat> I'm just, I just went ahead now and started adding some cadmium orange light with white. We're just working on the shape of the cheekbones right now and I added some more uh, flesh mixture which is thalo yellow green with alizarin crimson more alizarin crimson there to make it look pinkish and then I switched to some yellow ochre to add on the neck and around the eyes a little bit 
and this helps further shape the eyes and add highlights here. You don't want your skin to all be one color because people's skin is not one color. There's all kinds of pinks and yellows, oranges, even purples, blues, even greens in the shadows. And if you just use one color, it will make it look flat. So you know you need to look at your photo reference and just look at the skin tones and go ahead and add them above the eyes. Add well, I worked a little bit on the hat there. I decided the hat was too high. So I took my yellow ochre mixture and brought the brim of the hat down a little bit on her forehead and went ahead and worked on the crown of the hat a little bit with some white added to the yellow ochre and you can use your number eight filbert for this if you're following along traditionally and then I went ahead and worked on some highlights on the nose and you can just take your flash mixture your thala yellow green and alizarin crimson and throw in some white here for this and I added highlights to further shape the cheekbones and then I went ahead and started on the ear and remember that the ear is proportional to the top of your eyebrow and the bottom of your nose and I went ahead and widened the neck out because remember the neck goes up back behind the ear or else it will look too skinny and then I went ahead and added some of the lines on the face now when you add lines on the face you want to smooth these out you don't want them to be hard lines because that makes somebody look really old and so you want to try to keep those lines smooth even around the eyes you want to try to keep the edges soft you don't want real hard edges and I'm using probably burnt umber or burnt sienna for this and then I went ahead and switched to a smaller brush here to to draw in the eyebrows it's kind of like drawing them in if you use the the script brush following along traditionally and just go ahead and take a mixture of blue and brown and add some white and that will give you gray and I just wanted to go ahead and work on the hair a little bit this won't be the final the final work by any means but you want to go ahead and and just work on it a little bit and then I went ahead and took a darker color and started working on the eyelashes. Eyelashes usually don't show up unless you've got an extreme close up, but they kind of look like a little dark line that's broken. And I started a little bit of detail work on the ear. Again, you don't want extreme detail yet. And you're probably not going to have the ear be very detailed anyway. You want the main focus on the face. You want the, the ears to look right, but you don't want it to be the main focus. And so then I was working a little bit more on around the eyes and the mouth. And you just keep working back and forth with light and dark paint to shape the features. You go ahead and add highlights above the mouth and you go ahead and add dark lines along the edges and all under the nose for the shadow. You can work with browns and add the, the lighter skin colors and kind of smooth out the lines. We don't want the lines to look real rough. And then you want to go ahead and add a little bit of shadow under the hat. Now this won't be the final shadow. I just put that in there so that I can work on it later. And here I went ahead and added a little bit of orange, cadmium orange light with, you know, some burnt sienna thrown in and white. That gives a, an orange color. And you want to go ahead and add that along the side of the head because the flesh is darker right there under the hat and along the edges of the face where the shadows are and then go ahead and and just work on shaping your features and shaping the eyes if you can get the eyes right this is about three quarters of the battle with portrait painting is to get the eyes right and you want to go ahead and and work on the shape of the chin 
and the shape of the jawline there. And I'm adding a little bit of a darker color. Alizarin crimson with um, thala yellow green again, but less white added to it. And you might throw in some burnt sienna. And then again, working on the shape of the eyelids and around the eyes, adding a little bit of highlights to the nose. Just working on the around the lines again. We don't want hard edges on the the mouth lines and the the facial lines under the eyes. You want to try to keep these soft, and then add a little bit of highlights again, back and forth. You just go back and forth, adding highlights, adding darks, and just go ahead and work on the shapes. It's kind of like molding with clay, although you're molding with paint instead of clay. And then I went ahead and added, darkened the mouth again with alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of purple. And then I added white to that to make a pink mixture and it highlights the bottom lip. The bottom lip usually catches the highlight in a portrait. So they're usually lighter than the top lip. And I just go ahead and work on that a little bit. I covered it up, but I'll add it again. And you want to go ahead and add a little bit of darkening to the corners to show the separation of the lips. And add a, a little bit more details to the, the nose and stuff. This is the point where you think, oh my gosh, it looks terrible. What am I going to do? No, you just keep going. This is natural. This is natural. This is part of the process. You just keep on going and keep on working and refining. This is the end of part two of our portrait lesson. And in part three, we're going to go ahead and continue refining the features on the face. And we will also add pupils to the eyes and we're going to add in the shadows to the face. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you for all your support and I will catch you later.